Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm Rush Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss our video. The Tennessee Volunteers are having an interesting offseason so far because the Volunteers went on their furthest run in the Rick Barnes era in the NCAA tournament, making it all the way to the Elite Eight, and that was very impressive. A lot of people criticized Rick Barnes because of the fact he hadn't been able to take Tennessee far into the NCAA tournament, despite having having a lot of regular season success. But I think all of those questions have died down. But now Tennessee is going to have to wonder how good are they going to be next year because the Volunteers, they are losing a ton of talent from this past year's team, including Santiago Vescovi, Josiah Jordan James. They're out of eligibility. Dalt Connect, he's off to the NBA. And then when you also look at some transfer portal players that Tennessee is also losing as well. So Rick Barnes is going to have to do a lot of work in the transfer portal to bring in some players to replace all of the talent that they are losing. And Tennessee just got some good news today with the announcement that Felix Akpara, the former Ohio State Center, has transferred to the Tennessee Volunteers. I'm going to go over whether I believe Felix Akpara can have a significant role on the Tennessee Volunteers next season and whether I believe that Rick Barnes has Tennessee on the right track to be a solid team yet again in the SEC next season. Now, we know that the SEC is very competitive right now because they're adding Texas and Oklahoma into the conference next season, so that's going to shake up things in the SEC basketball race. And then when you also look at teams like Alabama, who are doing really well right now with Nate Oates. Arkansas just got John Calipari. Florida's on the rise a little bit with Todd Golden. So there's a lot of competition in the SEC. You still got Bruce Pearl at Auburn as well. So Tennessee, they have to continue to recruit at a high level and bring in quality players if Rick Barnes is going to keep them toward the top of the SEC. And they had a fantastic season this past year. That Elite Eight run was very impressive. But a lot of people expected it with the amount of talent that they had. But when you've got a lot of talent, you're going to end up losing a lot of talent every single offseason these days, including in the transfer portal. That's just the day and age that we live in. And Joe Tipton tweeted out that Ohio State Transfer Center Felix Akpara has committed to Tennessee. The six foot eleven sophomore averaged six and a half points, six and a half boards, and over two blocks per game this past season. And he was a former four star recruit. He was a big pickup for Chris Holtman at Ohio State. But unfortunately for the Buckeyes, they had some struggles with Chris Holtman. But now he's out of town, and they got Jake Diebler as their next head coach, who was their interim head coach when Chris Holtman was fired. But unfortunately for Jake Diebler, he was not able to keep all of the Ohio State players from this past season. They lost Roddy Gale to their arch rival in the Michigan Wolverines, and they lost Felix Akpara as well, their starting center. And ironically, Felix Akpara kind of trolled Ohio State a little bit because he said on April Fool's Day that he was going to be returning to the Buckeyes for next season. He said, I'm excited and grateful to announce I'm 100% committed to running it back with Ohio State and Buckeye Nation, but that ended up not being the case because he ended up putting his name in the transfer portal a while later. And he's a six foot 11, 235 pound big. And Tennessee, they needed to be able to bring in a center through the transfer portal, which I'll explain later because they are losing some key pieces down low from this past season's team. And when you look at what Felix Akpara has done in his two seasons in college basketball, he averaged four points and four boards in his first season at Ohio State. And he upped it this season to six and a half points and six and a half boards. But he also played more minutes this season. So his scoring kind of just went up because he played more. The only issue with Felix Akpar is that he is a very limited offensive player. Most of his game is down low. He doesn't really score that much outside of being a lob threat or if he's able to hit like a one foot jump hook shot or a layup. And that's why his field goal percentage is very high, close to 60%. But his free throw shooting numbers tell the real story on his shooting ability. He only shot 59% at the line this past season at Ohio State. That's kind of a liability. Obviously, that isn't nowhere near as bad as like Shaquille O'Neal or anything. Thing, but still, if you want to have Felix Akpara in the game when you are in crunch time and then the other team fouls him, he's not exactly a reliable player to knock down free throws. He also doesn't have three-point shooting to his game either because he made one three in his freshman year at Ohio State. He was one for five, but this past season at Ohio State, he was 0 of 6 from three, so he doesn't really shoot threes. So I don't really think that's a big deal for Tennessee and probably a reason he transferred to Tennessee because Rick Barnes has had success recently with a lot of centers that do do not shoot threes. So as long as Tennessee has a lot of shooters around the big that doesn't shoot threes, Felix Akpara can thrive with the Volunteers. And the reason why it's so important that Tennessee brought Felix Akpara in, because the Volunteers are losing Jonas Adu to the transfer portal. He was their starting center this past season, who averaged 12 points per game and eight rebounds. This is something that you would have never have saw in college basketball a few years ago. A guy that was a starting center at a big program like Tennessee in college basketball, and then he ends up deciding to leave. That's why you have 
have to re-recruit your team every single offseason because you don't know even if a guy starts whether he's going to end up leaving or not. So that's why the Volunteers had to replace Jonas Adu with another center. They're also losing Toby Awaka, who was another front court player for the Volunteers. He was a bench player but still played significant minutes for Tennessee. And they're also losing a couple other guys that didn't play too much. Freddie Dillion is kind of the more high-profile name than DJ Jefferson, who's also in the portal. But Freddie Dillion, he was a guy that was young. He still had a lot of potential. But he's out of the program. He's committed to the Penn State Nittany Lions. And that's what's so tough about high school recruiting these days. Because Rick Barnes, he's done very well bringing in talented players in through the high school ranks. Nothing like Kentucky or anything. But still, he would bring in some five-star players almost every offseason. But if you look at what Rick Barnes has done in the high school recruiting ranks this year, he only has one four-star guard and Bishop Boswell committed to the program, a combo guard who's six foot four. Maybe he can have an impact next season, but it even seems like Rick Barnes is kind of going away a little bit from high school recruiting because he realizes that, okay, if I bring in a freshman player, he might not be ready to go up against all these juniors and seniors who are still in college basketball. And even if he is ready, he might transfer to another program after one year anyway. So it kind of just defeats the purpose of bringing in all these freshmen. That's why more and more teams are recruiting through the portal. The only danger of recruiting through the portal is that all these guys might not mesh together. And when you're bringing in a lot of portal guys, sometimes those guys might only stay with your program for one year before they end up going to another program. So it just is what it is. We live in a day and age where you're basically going to have it every single year where half of your team is new. And if your coach gets fired or leaves for another program, your entire team might change. Kind of like Arkansas has or Kentucky's or Michigan. So it's crazy. But the Tennessee Volunteers, I don't think they're in bad shape for next season. I believe when you look at what Rick Barnes is doing so far in the offseason, I think he's trying to address the holes on their roster that they're going to have to replace for next season if they're going to be good again because he also has brought in Darlin Stone DeBar from Hofstra who averaged 17 and a half points per game this past season and he shot 40% from three. He's probably going to be the diet version of Dalton Connect. He might not have as big of an impact as he did this past season because it's very tough for a transfer portal player from a smaller school like Dalton Connect was for Northern Colorado to come into a program like Tennessee and be one of the best players in college basketball and could end up being a top 20 pick in the draft. That doesn't happen all that often. But if DeBar can come into Tennessee and average over 10 points per game at least and still shoot around 40% from three, then he will be a good pickup for the Volunteers. But Tennessee, like I said, losing all the players that they are from this past season. They've got a lot of roster holes. And losing Jonas A to the portal, they had to bring in a center. I think Felix Akpar, with him averaging over two blocks per game, that's going to help out Tennessee big time down low on defense. It's going to make it very difficult for opposing players to go into the paint when he's down there. But he's also not a great offensive player. He's got to get better at free throw shooting. And I think Tennessee's probably going to have to get another big, at least like a power forward or maybe a backup center that can play behind Felix Akpar or at least split the minutes with him. So Tennessee will be able to have enough front court depth. And they're going to have to do a little bit more work in the backcourt. DeBar's a good pickup. They got a good freshman coming in as well. But Tennessee still has some roster spots available. And if they want to compete at the top of a very competitive SEC next season in college basketball to show after their big Elite Eight run that they're not going to fall off a little bit. The Volunteers have more work to do in the portal, but Rick Barnes, he's utilizing the portal very well. He's brought in a couple quality players in Darlin Stone DeBar and Felix Akpar, so the Volunteers are on the right track, but Rick Barnes definitely can't be done in the transfer portal, or Tennessee might not have a good enough team right now for next season. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about Felix Akpar transferring to the Tennessee Volunteers and whether you believe that he is the center that Tennessee needed for next season, or if you believe that Tennessee should have brought in another center to replace Jonas Adu and what you think Rick Barnes has to continue to do in the transfer portal to help build a great roster for the volunteers for next season. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Follow me on Twitter as well. Link is in the description, and I'll see you next time.